this is the hardest part of life, is that we don't live forever, right? But if we did, we'd likely take it for granted. Yet, most of us still do. And so growing up, Webby used to say, this too shall pass. And for a long time, I didn't quite understand what it really meant. I used to think it was just a message of resilience about standing there strong in challenging times, right? Knowing that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. But really, it's also a lesson in gratitude and being present and recognizing that at your highest moments, they are also going to pass to be thankful. Hi, welcome to my house. I know you all have been wanting a tour, so Let's get right into it. A lot has changed. Come on in. So immediately upon en entering, you're going to notice that everything has changed in the front of the house. Um, and in my opinion, definitely for the better. But I know you all had a lot of comments around about removing all these walls and how it's going to take away the character of the house and that kind of stuff. And um, I politely disagree. I think it's actually made this space a lot more usable. And that's really what I wanted. Uh, my family has owned this house since 1973 and, you know, what I can tell you is that I spent my, I spent a lot of time in this house growing up and I don't think I ever saw anybody actually in the formal living and actually in the formal dining area. And for me, I just saw it as a bunch of wasted space and I just didn't want to leave it that way. I wanted to be able to open it all up so it's more inviting because I like to entertain and I wanna be able to have friends over and it be an area that we actually use, right? When you buy a house, you're paying for the square footage, you might as well be using it. So, um, while I may use this as a formal living area someday, currently I have this vintage pool table here that was given to me by my grandparents on my mom's side this last summer. Um, my grandfather bought it in the mid 70s and like my mom and all of her brothers and everything, grew up with it, enjoyed it. I built forts under this thing when I was at their house all the time. I, I, I got a lot of memories around this pool table and it's, it's honestly one of my prized possessions. And I think it fits really nicely in the house because it does have this vintage look. You know, the pool balls have this patina on them and I think it actually really adds to the home um, and adds to the character of the interior. So um, I definitely have that mid-century modern style. It's something that I've always liked and I've always found to be timeless. Um, and while this house is a more of a traditional ranch style on the exterior, and the interior was also that, I wanted to kind of update it to suit my own style and so that it was a better place to be able to have that kind of furniture because I knew that that's really what I wanted. So, um, yeah, cool. Come over this way and you'll notice that we have uh, the formal dining area um, is a lot more open, right? And this entire space kind of has this more gallery effect to it. And that's really what I wanted. My family has always collected art um, as far back as I can remember. And I am slowly starting to accumulate my own local art collection. You know, I have a lot of just run of the mill prints you can get on, you know, any website out there. But then I also have been starting to fill the space up with some local art. Um, and that's really why I wanted this effect and wanted more wall space is so that I can at, over time start to fill it up with uh, local art from, you know, artists here in Albuquerque and that kind of thing. So follow me this way and we'll go take a look at the living area. So a lot has changed in here and some things haven't so far. So as you can see, this space is a lot more open. We, we open this wall up as much as we could so that it can, that this living area could flow also into the kitchen, right? Um, when this house was built, everything was so segmented that it was really, you know, it's not really a house that I could see myself entertaining in. And now that this is open and we're gonna reorient all the furniture here once we finish the fireplace later this month, um, I think it's gonna be a much more inviting space uh, to be able to have people over. You know, we got cooking going on in the kitchen and stuff like that. We can have the game on over here um, and enjoy the space a whole lot, more, a whole lot better. Now, the fireplace uh, is still unfinished, but like I said, it's getting done later this month. Uh, we're gonna move the TV up here. Then we will be reorienting the room uh, this way. 
Um, but all of this furniture is gonna have to change over time. I'm really just using what I had uh, in the moment because, well, you know, you gotta make things work sometimes. Now, in the bar area, a lot has changed and a lot is not. It's a pretty basic bar. There's not a whole lot that needs to go on in here other than I'd like to um, add that wood accent wall in this back, back side here. And then uh, maybe some good lighting and I'd like some maybe uh, some wine racks and stuff built in into the wall. And I'd love to have a nice espresso machine because I, I'm really using it more as a coffee and booze bar. I drink a lot more coffee than I drink booze. Um, but it's still a work in progress. I think at one point uh, we're gonna start to put coffee bags on this wall. It's kind of an idea I got from Little Bear. It's a coffee shop here in Albuquerque and I just think it's a cool idea. So I've been saving all of my craft coffee bags over the year or so. Um, but it'd look kind of funky if I only had a few up there. So I've kind of got to wait until I have enough of them. That's not really helping my caffeine addiction, is it? Now, another little cool memento is this uh, hat here. It's a Miller High Life delivery truck driver's hat, which actually belonged to my great uncle. Um, he, was a, he, was a, he was delivering Miller High Life and driving Miller High Life trucks in the 50s. And so I have it here along with a lot of other um, Miller High Life like neons and clocks and stuff like that from the era. My family was able to keep them over the years and so um, I'm cleaning them up and I want to make sure that they're safe to put on the wall. I don't want to like have a house fire um, before I start using them again, but I'm excited to actually put those in here uh, and kind of pull it all together. And it's also a little bit of a nod to my grandma because um, I used to mess around and wear that hat in the bar playing around and stuff when I was a kid. So yeah, let's go take a look at the kitchen. All right, so the kitchen is way different mainly because we got rid of the peninsula style and we added in this huge island, which I think is really nice. There was never really enough counter space in this kitchen to begin with. Um, my grandmother had an antique butcher block here in the middle that she used kind of as a kitchen island, but to be honest, between my dad, her, my sister, and family members and stuff, this kitchen was really claustrophobic and tiny. It was really tough to like get around. You know, everybody was trying to like squeeze around each other. And so I really wanted to open it up and I think this is a way better use of the space. Um, if you're wondering what the appliances are, is these are um, Cafe by GE. They're kind of a mid-range appliance and I've been really, really happy with them. Uh, I like this matte white finish. And again, this kind of gold finish on all of the uh, handles and stuff like that. Um, I found that it's very difficult to try to match finishes on the hardware and stuff uh, on appliances along with like in your kitchen and stuff you're gonna have to do a little bit more research because mine aren't quite perfect um, and then if we come around here to this side here you'll notice that we have a gas range the range was originally electric so we did have to run a gas line uh, in here because well I like cooking with gas so that was a big thing um, I had my my plumber come in and run a line to it as well as the uh, utility room because I just rather use gas than just electric dryers and stuff like that too. So a quick little memento is this dinner bell. This dinner bell um, was in my grandmother's kitchen. It's been in this house as far as I've ever known. Um, and it's something that I used to mess around with as a kid and kind of annoy people with by ringing the bell. Um, and so it just reminds me a lot of my grandmother and that time, um, in fact, I hung it up in here um, after she passed, and then after her funeral, I have a I wrote a, her eulogy, and I have a copy of it behind here. So in a way, I, I see it as it's kind of like my grandmother is looking after me every time I come in and I go or I'm leaving. Um, I see that you know, and it feels like she's watching over me, kind of thing. If we come over here, we just you know have more pantry space. Uh, the house didn't have a lot of pantry space in the, to begin with. My grandmother just had this tiny little pantry and then was just having to put things in cupboards all over. Um, so this is a lot more space as you can see. They're deep, we can fill it um, a lot better than the old ones and I've been really happy with them. All the cabinets are soft closed, you know, in terms of drawers and the doors and stuff like that. Uh, they're made by a company uh, called Belmont out of Washington and I've been rather happy with them. So that's pretty much the kitchen and utility area. Let's go take a look at the garage. The garage, and nothing has changed, like almost anything at all, other than uh, our, our cars are in it, you know? Um, I really plan on, I, I want a perfectly organized garage, right? 
And I've always wanted a garage where I could work on my cars and, and that kind of stuff. You know, this is like one of the few times I haven't had some kind of project car. Um, but I do have a motorcycle I need to finish restoring. I just need to pick it up for my dad's. And now I have the space to actually do that kind of thing. Um, you'll notice that I have a shoe on the back of the tailgate of my truck because every time I pull the truck in or out, it's a, well, it's a manual door, so I have to open it myself. And then also um, I have to prop it up. So that's something I'm looking to upgrade hopefully pretty soon is I want all new garage doors, openers, um, finish the floors and pull down the paneling here and we'll drywall everything, sheet rock it and all that. Um, and then add some really good lighting because I wanna be able to detail my cars and that kind of stuff in the garage. So it's a work in progress. All right, as we make our way to the other side of the house, let's stop here at the powder bath. Um, and what you'll find is that not a whole lot has changed other than we took that door out because it was super awkward. I never liked it as a kid, you know. I always felt like somebody was gonna walk in on me while I was pooping or something, and it was really annoying having a door on either side. So that's been framed in, we got rid of it. And really it's just a basic bathroom. It needs to be decorated a little bit better, but you know, that can all come in time. I'm not planning on moving anytime soon, so it's a work in progress as well. Follow me down the hallway and we'll take a look at the bedrooms. Um, if you notice coming down this hallway, because this wall is gone, it's not just this tunnel down the center of the house. And that's something I really wanted to eliminate. This house had a basically a hallway that ran from both from one side to the other. And it was really dark and I just didn't like it. So I'm really glad that it's nice and opened up. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the primary. You'll notice that not a lot has changed in here other than uh, we removed the French doors. I got rid of them and I kind of go back and forth on whether I like them or not. Uh, some people have suggested putting like a barn door here, but I just can't stand barn doors in the first place. So that's a solid nope. Um, but if you look in the bathroom itself, not a lot has changed in terms of its actual layout. It's really just more of the materials and that kind of stuff. Um, different, you know, different vanities. We went th with these double vanities. I will say that in hindsight, um, I don't really like them. I wish that they, I would have gone with something that was a little bit more of just your standard vanity because while I think they look aesthetically pleasing, I really do like the look of them. Um, their functionality isn't that great. We just don't have that much counter space and that's kind of a bummer. So eventually I have a feeling that we will use these cabinets here to then create a uh, oh, just a full length uh, vanity that goes end to end because I think that's a little bit more functional. But hey, you live and you learn sometimes. Right, so we go into my dad's old room. Um, honestly, it's not that different other than it has new flooring and baseboards and a different color and everything. Uh, it's pretty empty. Most of the house or actually most of the bedrooms are pretty empty because when I moved here, I came from about 600 square feet to a little over 3000 square feet. And as you can imagine, um, that's a lot of square footage to furnish when you don't have all the furniture. So I'm really taking my time and that kind of stuff on furnishing the rest of the house because I don't really want to fill it with a bunch of crap. Um, I'd rather find some nice, you know, either real mid-century pieces from that era or like reproductions of those, you know, um, over time. Heading down this hallway, other than other completely empty bedrooms, um, you'll find that we put these, uh, these cabinet doors on the built-ins here in the, the hallway. The house already had a lot of storage for linen and that kind of stuff. So we just ordered doors that uh, match the ones for the rest of the house. And I really like the way that it came out. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So now heading into this bathroom over here, not a lot has changed other than we added some more storage here with these cabinets. And then we have this floating uh, countertop and sink set up. Uh, went with the round mirrors, updated the lighting. I want to do the subway tile on this wall as well, just because I think it would look pretty nice and tie it together a little bit better with the shower that's in here. But largely, this isn't really that big of a change. Last stop along the journey here is gonna be into my office, which is entirely different than the rest of the house. In my office, you'll find that it's very much a representation of myself and my personality. I use it as really a creative space for myself, you know? I. I shoot my videos in here, I edit my stuff in here, I run my business in this office, um, and I really wanted it to be a space that um, I can draw inspiration from. I have a bunch of little mementos and stuff like that that just kind of, you know, are, are pieces of my personality. 
you know, from my model cars. Some of these I've had since I was like a child, um, but they're all basically, you know, Porsches, uh, Fords and GMs and some Ferraris. Those are typically my favorite car companies out there. Um, I have some more local art and then I also have some like posters and stuff from Concours that I've been to and, and that's that's pretty cool. You know, like this one is in particularly rather cool. Uh, I'm a big Ford fan, right? And so in 2016 when uh, Ford won the, uh, the won Le Mans again, that was like a really big deal, right? Uh, Ford brought out uh, their collection of all the, the GTs, right? First and second gen GTs or uh, GT40s of the era. So that was really cool. I got to see him in person and actually take photos of those, which was really a cool opportunity back then. Um, I really need to make it back. My dad and I need to make a trip back to Pebble Beach for sure. I have uh, pieces of my vintage uh, camera collection. These were given to me by my grandmother and they've been in the family for probably 100 years or so. And then this photo of an SR-71 belonged to my grandfather. He was an SR-71 pilot um, towards the end of his career. And so um, that's, pretty sweet. The guy was a total badass. I also have uh, his field bag from Germany in here. Um, I have a small little miniature version of a uh, of the monolith that people were talking about in 2020 that one of my Instagram buddies sent to me, which is really cool. I have a pit boy from Fallout because uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a massive gamer. I love video games and I've been playing them my whole life. I love Bethesda games. I love RPGs. I love racing games. Um, you name it, I probably play it, which is pretty cool. And then on this wall here, we'll take a look. These are from the Santa Fe Concorso. Um, it doesn't run anymore up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but in uh, 2013, I had the privilege of uh, co-judging the European sports car class. Uh, and that year we chose a uh, Mercedes uh, 300 SL. It was a beautiful car um, and it was a nice, uh, light green color and it's actually local to Santa Fe um, and I had the opportunity to do that with a guy by the name of Mark Reinhardt. He was the uh, curator for Ralph Lauren at the time and then also Derek Hill. Derek Hill is the son of uh, racing legend Phil Hill. So that was a really cool, uh, you know, opportunity that I have and I keep these here in my office just to kind of remind me of that and also, you know, I'd really like to see that Concord come back someday. It was a really cool event. And then uh, we have my longboards from college. I still held on to those, which is really cool. And then um, I actually have a completely unopened Super Soaker 100 that my grandmother bought me and forgot to give me, right? You know, and I don't know if you know this, but like uh, try to, trying to find a Super Soaker that didn't get completely demolished from the 90s is like really hard. So I've kept it and it's kind of like just a cool thing to have. Like who else has a completely untouched super soaker from in its box and everything it's a it's actually the laramie like it's the real deal folks in this closet i've been using it kind of as just an overflow gear closet you know i have a lot of cables and mics and other camera gear that i just don't have space for in my office and then also like some of my hobby stuff you know my rc trucks and stuff that i've built over the years and a bunch of knickknacks so that's what we got going on. Joining me on the tour, I know a lot of you all have been waiting on it, so I appreciate your patience. And as you can see, a lot still needs to be finished on the house. We're gonna finish out that fireplace this month and I'll have a video for you on that. And then uh, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Nice!